that means grasp, hold on. Do you, do you remember the story of Jacob? He was coming. He had, you know, went. He had fled from his brother because he stole his uh, what? The birthright. Yeah, I would never get that through my quick translation. Uh, he stole his birth, the birthright from his brother, and then he fled to his uncle's house. He lay side on, on a, a great lad, got hung up, a bad deal, got married, has four wives, whatever. He's coming back with all his possessions back to the land of Canaan, and he knows he's going to meet his brother. And during the night... He's praying, and an angel of the Lord shows up. And he decides to do what with the angel of the Lord? He fights with the guy. He's like, no, no, no. You're not leaving until you give me a blessing. You think that, that's, it's that easy? And he fights the whole night with the angel of the Lord so he can get his blessing. That is the same picture here. Laying hold of eternal life. That is how God wants us to grasp eternal life. It's not like, yeah, we'll get there someday. It'll be fun. We'll praise the Lord, yada, yada. No, lay grasp. Hold on to it right now. You need it right now. Because when you lay hold of eternal life, you start living like you have eternal life. And if you start living like you have eternal life, you are holy, blameless, sanctified, patient, loving, faithful, and all the other things. Um, and then verse 17, he gives another command. Those that are rich, do not trust your riches. Because they are material. They come and they go, just like that. And I'm reading the Bible chronologically, so I read from chapter 1 of Genesis to chapter 11, and then I read the book of Job, because they think that was previous to Abraham. And in the book of Job, what happens? He is a very what? He is a very wealthy man. And, and back in the day, you know, you, you didn't see riches through Bitcoin and whatnot. It was camels, donkeys, land, possessions, and, and so forth. And he was very rich. And he didn't necessarily trust his riches, but all of a sudden, what happened to all of this? Yep. He had the graceful six messengers, right? A guy comes in. Hey, I was over there, and all of a sudden the house fell, and all your kids died, and I was the only one escaped. And then, right as he's finished talking, another one, yeah, and I was over there taking care of the camels, and somebody raided and took them all. And and right after him came another guy, and I was taking care of all the donkeys and all the sheep, and somebody came and took them all. And then another one comes in. <laughs> you see what happens to riches? They can vanish just like that. Um, what does, what are we instructed to do? Uh, verse 18, let them do good, be rich in good works, ready to give, willing to share. And then just like verse 12, storing up for themselves a good foundation for the time to come that they may lay hold on eternal life. So if you are rich, you have more opportunity to build riches in heaven because you have more resources available. It's, everybody knows that being rich helps a lot in certain areas in our life, right? <laughs> and, and we should use that not for this life. We should use that for our eternal life. Okay. Now, let's go to the last part. Um, and we talked about this recent, right now, the eternal life. 
So what is the, the living? Titus chapter 2, verse 11. How does, how does God desire us to be living? We want to thank you all for joining us. We appreciate you and consider you a part of our family, just as the people attending in person. We want to ask that if this message touched you in any way, that you like this video, share it with your friends and family, and then also subscribe. This way you will get notified when we come out with other videos that may help bless you and others. Thank you again for joining us, and until next time, God bless and keep looking up.